What's happening guys? Today we have a 2010 Mercury Milan that needs front pads and rotors. We're going to take care of that today. Now the procedure, the, the pad part number, the rotor part number, everything is the same from 2006 through 2012 Ford Fusion or Mercury Milan. It's basically the same vehicle, but it's good to know that throughout the years, 06 to 12, everything was the same. 13, of course, was the refresh. So real quick, we're going to go for a little test drive. I'm going to show you what it's doing. They're vibrating really bad when you get to higher speeds, especially the left front here. So hopefully the calibers are hanging up on there. Um, but we're going to go ahead and change out the pads and rotors and check out the caliper condition while we're in there and get this car fixed up for this customer and get him back on the road. All right, so let's go for a little ride in the country together. Beautiful, gray, murky day. And we'll test these brakes out, get some speed going here. Check it out, about 50 miles an hour. You can really feel it in the left front there. Let's keep going here, get a little higher speed. Now I'm not getting too much in uh, the steering wheel. So when you have the warp front rotors or rotor thickness variations, you don't always get um, the vibration of the steering wheel where it oscillates back and forth. It's just thumping up there on the left-hand side. It feels more like a rotor thickness variation on the left front. So let's get back to the shop and check it out. All right, the first thing we're going to do is compress the caliper, and get the piston pushed back in just a little bit so you can pull off the caliper, unbolt it, and we'll take it off of here. Now, the way I do this is I use a wood clamp, actually, because it's a lot faster. And you simply put it on the back side here. Center it on this side, and especially if it's not um, seized in there, you'll see it'll go right back in, right here. So I'll do a couple pumps on that, get it pretty far in. You won't get it all the way in. And then I'll allow us to take it off. Now these ones right here are special because they'll just spin around in there. Uh, the pin will just spin while you're unbolting it. So you want to hold the pin with a 17 mil combo wrench, open end wrench. And you can just zip them off after that, put them to the side. Same thing down here, there's a hex right here. I'll show you a little bit better. And you can see it's already pretty loose in there. If you can get it in here, get it in there. It's a little rusty. And then we'll simply pop it off of there. Off to the side and you can see the whole caliper just simply comes off at this point now the one thing I like to do hopefully you can see you follow this up and there's a bolt right here that bolts the bracket to the knuckle I think that ought to get a little bit more slack now that bolt is a 10 millimeter we'll get that out of there off to the side and now there's much more room. And then we'll get the ABS wiring disconnected from it. it just pushes into it. And you get the right size adapter on there. And we'll be free here. Get it loose. Right tool for the job. And then we'll take our um, caliper hook and we'll simply hang it to the caliper and get it out of the way. So we can work. Okay, now with the caliper out of the way, you can see the two 15 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket to the knuckle. Let's go ahead and take those off. Again, it's a 15 mil. Take them off from the side. I should pull this off of here. I'll show you something. You see how thin this inboard pad is right here? I mean, look at the edge on there compared to this one. That's what lot rod does. You can see the rust in the back side here. Now when it's rusty from sitting, because this customer actually doesn't drive that much, plus the lot rod from the dealer, it's like sandpaper. So you don't have a smooth surface and a smooth surface going against each other. You have a rough surface and a smooth pad going against each other. So this is like sandpaper. It'll grind it down real fast, prematurely actually. So look at that. 
And it's got some nice ridges. I mean, you can't see them, but I can feel them. Bad, bad stuff. So let's go ahead and get this rotor off. Now, onto the rotor. Now, these are unique for the mere fact that they have two screws that hold them to the hub on there. So make sure you get those off of there before you start pounding this thing off of here. Now, these two are Torx 40 screws. So we're gonna pull those out. And the best way to get these out without stripping them and all that is to use an impact. So this is a T40, okay, see a Torx bit? And they're 3 h drive, so I actually put a 3 8 to half inch adapter so I get a little bit bigger uh, impact on here. And you shock them off. And you just hold the bit in there, make sure it's all the way in, and then shock it. And it comes right out. Woo! That was a test. And you can see it works very well. Now at this point, it's literally held on there by rust. So you need to shock it and get it off of there. Since we're replacing the rotors, and it's always a good idea to replace the rotors, you don't want to cut them. If you cut rotors, you'll be back here in 3,000 miles, change them out again. I'm telling you, replace them. Okay, so, see it's stuck on there? We need to whack it off there with the hammer. Now what I use is a three pound sledge. And that's so we have some mass behind us and we can actually shock it. Now, like I said, right here in the center on the back side is where it's actually sticking to the hub. So you wanna do a few taps right here. Okay, of course, eye protection. And if that doesn't work, we have the option. I can go this way, which does help, but since we're replacing it, we can damage this, who cares? We can whack it from the back side, spin it, whack it from the back side, okay? And you can see it's starting to move on there. I prefer, if possible, not to use any rust penetrant around here because it just gets messy. So let's head in the center. Shock it a little bit. Watch out for the studs. And you see it's coming off. No messy rust penetrant. And once it's like that, you simply wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now what's happening right now is that the, the, the hub flange is perfectly the size, almost perfectly the size of the inside of this hat right here, of the rotor, okay? So it's, it's a little rusty in there and we're just working it past inside of there. And some are tough like this and you need to spin it and hit it. Or you can pull from one side and tap from the other. Watch your fingers when you're spinning it. You see all this rust coming off. And that is why you want to use eye protection and have a catch can like this. The drain pan. And you see this one's stuck in there pretty good. So this is a good example of what you may come across. Okay. Ooh. And you see the inside here? And make sure you guys can see this. You see the inside here? This is the little hat part down the top of right here that gets rusted, as you can see. And then we're fighting past that. We already broke free of the flange here. We're getting past this now. It's just rusty all around. It's bad. Look at that chunk taken out. Look at that. That's gonna cause some vibrations. So at this point, what you want to do, take a wire brush, if you have it. I use a wire, uh, an angle grinder with a cookie on there, and I'll clean up the flange on here, okay? But you're gonna pull off that coating on there, the zinc coating or whatever that's on there. So what you want to do is put a light coat of anti-seize back onto here, okay? Especially around the centering flange right here, where it goes to the rotor. Just make sure you don't get any on your threads. If you do, brake clean in a rag, get it off. Okay, you want it off your threads for your lug nuts. So, get the outside clean, get the inside clean, we'll wash it down some brake clean, and then we'll apply that anti-seize. We'll be ready for the new parts. 
Okay, now that the hub face is all clean, let's go after the bracket, get it ready for the new pads, okay? So what you wanna do is leave these pins in here for right now. We're gonna go ahead and pull these pads off of here. Now remember, each one of these ear, these uh, pads have these uh, spreader clips on them. So get those off of there. Your new pad should come with them, especially if you get Motorcraft. And the one thing I can tell you is that Motorcraft's gonna give you the best value and it'll be nice and quiet for you uh, because they're organic pads. So these ones throughout the years, they had a bunch of different weirdo um, shims on them. Um, one side had five, one side had two, and look at all these different weirdo shims that are on here, okay? If you're using something that's new, like these ones right here for Motorcraft, you have the, the backing plate, the pad material, and the shim, which is right here, is already on there. So you don't need any more shims. So you can go ahead and toss them and get them out to the side there. They, they're made, uh, those, those shims are made just for the OEM original pads. So you see this one's not too bad. That was the outer. Now if these do get stuck and you're like, this one is just a little bit, all you gotta do is tap them evenly and get them out of there. And the reason why they're um, like that is because there's rust underneath these clips that's squeezing it in, okay, on uh, the ears here. So this is the inner bad. And that one, whew, that's where our vibration was coming from. So again, this one has uh, some different kinds. I think this one has one shim or something like that, and the other one has three, and who knows. Yeah, this one has a weird additional shim. Again, you don't need any of these with the new pads. Now, your bracket, we wanna break it down and start cleaning and lubing everything on here. So these clips right here, the anti-rattle clips, you wanna pull those puppies off. Again, cat claw helps immensely with this kind of task. These freaking cat claws save the day. And we'll just pull these off. Whoa, and that one, oh man. These things are just falling apart. Okay, so let's get rid of these. Make sure you collect all the pieces so you don't puncture your tire. And now at this point, we're down to just the bare bracket itself. And these ones are actually very easy to get in here and clean with a wire brush or a cookie. So you get down um, to material in there, get the rust scale off so we're not uh, putting the new pads in there and they're getting stuck against the rotor and wearing out. You wanna clean it real nice and then we're gonna apply some anti-seize to it and then put the new clips on there. Now, what you wanna do is clean all that off, all that rust and scale, maybe brake clean it, wipe it down, get it nice and clean, all this rust off of here, and then we'll start pulling out these pins right here. And they're simply slide pins, and inside of here is a smooth shaft and grease. So they simply pull right out of here. Again, make sure you do your other work first. I'm just showing you guys. So we'll pull back the boot on here a little bit because there's a little ridge in there. It sits in and locks into the pin. And then you'll simply slide it out, okay? Now it's kind of impossible to get down inside of there. I don't worry about too much unless it's really rusty uh, to clean that out. Um, usually these pins are different, top and bottom too. So it's best to go ahead, take it out, wipe it off, and clean it. We got a focus problem here, kind of. Um, and clean it and lubricate it with the Motorcraft silicone grease, okay? It's a thicker silicone brake grease. That's great for uh, brake components like this. Okay, now with our hub face cleaned up on here, got a little anti-seize on here to keep it from corroding, okay? Make sure you keep it off the threads. Light coat is all you need. We have our bracket cleaned up and our anti-seize on there, you can see it right there underneath the anti-rattle clips. Our um, slide pins, we cleaned them up and applied the XG3A Motorcraft silicone grease. Pop them back in so the boots are attached, okay? As you can see here, both sides. Let's go on to uh, the caliper right here. Now the caliper itself is pretty simple to clean up. What you wanna do is clean the face of it with a wire brush 
And then the ears on the other side right here, the inside of the ears. Make sure they're rust free. Spray a little brake clean on there. And then we're gonna apply that same silicone grease all around the circumference of the piston here. And then we're also gonna put a healthy dose on the back side of the ears of the caliper. And then the caliper will be ready to go also. Okay, now once everything's cleaned up, we can go ahead and put these anti-rattle clips back onto here. And each one of these pieces is separate on here. And the one thing you wanna remember is that the, this side right here that bumps out, you see the tension side of the clip goes in the outside, okay? So you want the inside of the, um, try to get in there. There we go. Right here, the flat side on the inboard side where the rotor goes around and around. So there's no chance of it hitting. So that's how those go, one on each side. Of course on both sides. And then this center piece, they're all universal and they just simply go in between here and they push in and they snap in right here. They'll lock in also. And there's a couple ears here where they lock in. And that's it, we can start putting this back on. Okay, now on to the rotor. Now the rotors that I use are from Motorcraft. Um, they're usually just regular silver, you know, bare metal rotors. These are warranty eligible ones, I think though. And these have a coating on the outside. Okay, that's anti-rust coating. So these ones don't have no oil on them and you wanna leave this coating on. It will wear off with the pads, it's perfectly normal. This is how they come from the factory, okay? So leave this coating on there. If you have, you know, uh, AutoZone or something like that, rotors, which I don't recommend, and they have oil on them, you wanna use a healthy dose of brake clean and wash them off, okay? Get it off of there before you put them onto here. Otherwise, put your rotor onto your hub face here and make sure you line up these two holes. So we can put those screws back in. Now these ones especially, if you're using these, which I recommend um, from Motorcraft here, really make sure that your hands are clean either way so you don't get anything on here the best you can. So what I'll do is I'll take those set screws a little blue Loctite on there, and we'll push it against the face here, and we'll get started, you know, three, four threads, maybe more, so it holds it for us. And then same thing with the top side here. Okay. And then, you know, just hand tight, a little couple impacts, and it's set. It's only holding the rotor to the flange here. That's all it's doing. That's it. Okay, we're gonna turn this back to the left, uh, for the left front here, so we can start bolting the caliper bracket up next. Okay, onto the caliper bracket. We're gonna go ahead and simply lay it onto here. Take our two bolts, our 15 millimeter bolts, little blue Loctite on them, and get lined up and bolt it onto here. Since these are like a blind, um, you know, fastener, I guess you could say, you can't really get back here and see. What you wanna do is definitely thread them in by hand like that. So we have no issues with cross threading. And then we'll snug them down. And the torque spec on these two bolts, these 15 millimeter bolts, is 66 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and get that. Torque down. Okay. So with those torqued down, we're set to go. We can start putting our new pads in here. Now these pads, like I said, you don't need to put anything on them. It's all on the caliper already. These have a shim on them, everything's ready to go. They're all the same. Okay, so we can just go ahead and slip them into here. You're gonna wanna angle it into these ears right here because they're keeping tension on them so they don't rattle and move around in there. So as long as you can get in there, and these ones are a little trickier, 
because the bracket's in the way here, it's best to use, ta-da, the cat claw once again. We're gonna pull it back just a little bit, top and bottom, so we can get in here and get the ear in there of the pad. Especially when the pad, the clips move. There we go. Get them in there. And then we'll pull the ear out. There is a little tricky getting in here. Just a little bit. You just want to pull back. There we go. Now this one's all in, so you simply push out on that clip and then in. And that'll hold it all in place like that. And this side should be much easier. You just come in like this, push against the clips, and then set it in place. And that's the one thing you want to make sure of is that the um, pad material, of course, facing the rotor. So these are in all the way. They slid right in. That's key. You don't want to fight these in because that means there's still too much rust on the bracket. You need to get it off. Else these are going to sit here and hang against the rotor and burn up. Okay, so these are absolutely perfect. Now, before we forget, and I need to find mine. There they are. We need to put the spreaders on here. And these help keep that pad away from the rotor. And if yours are nice and loose like mine, they will pop them back out. Because these little clips are pretty strong. And Ford doesn't use these too often. I usually see these on the bigger uh, vehicles, like the Super Duties. But that is how they look. They go into the holes on the backing plate of the pads, top and bottom. And let's go ahead and get our caliper off. There we go. So we can slide it onto here. And that'll kind of capture it so they don't fly off on us. One note though. The caliper, mine obviously is not twisted, but just make sure your caliper hose is not twisted. Let's bring you up just a little bit. Because remember, we took off this bolt earlier, and that's great, that's fine, it works. But while you're hanging up there, you can twist this hose. So make sure it's going nice and straight over there so we don't kink it. Now with this on here, Let's go ahead and put our two bolts back into the ears of the caliper, into the guide pins. So let's get it kind of centered on here. A couple of threads by hand. And these again should all line up like this. There we go, just like that. And you can see the tension that's on there from those anti-rattle, or the uh, spreaders, and of course the ears on these right here too. So it all comes together to kind of keep it, um, some tension on there. These two bolts right here are 20 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and tighten those down. Now these ones in general, because everything's clean and new and, and the threads are good to go, you should be able to tighten them down, especially with an impact without holding it. If you're doing it by hand, you may have to still hold the hex on here. Okay, so these are good to go. Okay, now at this point, the brake job is done. You just repeat the same procedures for the other side of the vehicle in the front here. Now one thing I can tell you is that we, we can press this piston back into the bore and that push fluid back into the master cylinder. Now at this point there's no leakage coming out of there, it did not overflow. What you may want to do if you don't have a suction gun is get into the vehicle after the first one and go ahead and hit the pedal until it's nice and hard 
and then you can go on to the other side of the vehicle and repeat the same process. Now, when you're done, it's very important, when you're done with the brake job, the wheels are back on, everything's torqued down and secure, what you wanna do is go into the vehicle, leave it in park, and start the vehicle and, and, and push down the brake pedal a couple of times until you get a nice, hard brake pedal, and then you know you're safe and ready to go. That's about it. Hopefully this helped. You guys get your car back up and running safe and secure. I'll see you next time.